hello and welcome to this landscape ongoing course um, today I will be teaching you all how to recreate one of my paintings um, which is actually the one that's right behind me um, so this in this landscape class um, we're going to be learning how to blend our colors all together um, to create a beautiful landscape so we're going to need five colors today um, so go ahead and put blue paint on your palette. Um, we're going to need blue. We're also going to need red paint, yellow paint, black paint, and white paint. So go ahead and set up your palette and put those five colors down. Um, red, blue, yellow, black, and white paint. And what we're going to be doing today is using three brushes. So these are my three brushes. Today I have a big brush, a medium size brush, and a tiny brush. So these are my three. Um, so go ahead and make sure you have your three brushes and a cup of water. Um, you also want to make sure that you have a rag or a napkin nearby to wipe your brush on. And what we can do is work with our medium sized brush first. Um, so I'm going to have us dip our medium sized brush in our red paint. Um, I've actually already created the color. It's a purple color. So you're going to have to make purple. Um, in order to make this color, you're going to take your blue paint and your red and you're going to mix those two together to make purple. So go ahead and mix those two colors together. When I'm making this color I'm using a little bit more red. This is sort of like my color here. It's kind of like a reddish purple. So after you make those colors, um, what you're going to do is go to the very middle of your canvas. Um, before we start also, make sure your canvas is flipped this way or your paper. Um, so if it's vertical, uh, go ahead and flip it so it's horizontal, nice and long, so there's room for all of your landscape. And you're going to take your purple and you're going to make a line. What I'm doing here is I'm making my line a little bit higher, just slightly. So I have a little bit more of my water than my sky. And you're going to take your purple and go all the way across your canvas. I even like to paint the sides when I do this part. So it kind of looks like this. I'm going to go all the way across. Making sure that line is nice and straight. So after you take that line going all the way across, what you're going to do is put your medium sized brush down and you are going to switch into your big brush, which is this one. So with my big brush, I'm going to go inside of that purple again, the same purple that we were working with. And what I like to do is just fill up this entire space with purple, everything above your line. So all of this, we can paint with purple. I'm gonna go this way in this direction so I have this nice um, finish to my purple. And you're gonna go from one side all the way to the other side.
So if you have to remake your purple, make sure you make a good amount of purple. We have plenty for your landscape sky. covering all of that canvas if you still see some of your canvas underneath I like to put at least two coats down um, when I'm doing this that's one thing about acrylic paint is when you put that first layer down sometimes it requires another layer so make sure you're really smoothing out all of that purple As you see it's definitely definitely has more of a reddish tone to it so if you're getting more of like a bluish purple uh, make sure you are mixing a little bit more red in to make it this gorgeous reddish purple really pretty color Continuing to go back over. Um, once you fill it up, I always recommend going back over your purple. Not to make it soaking wet, but just to smear out that paint. That way it's, there's no clumps. And it's nice and smooth. If you're working with a canvas that has sides, I always recommend painting your sides too and the very top of your canvas. So that way when you hang it, it all looks purple. So once you complete that part of filling in the top part of your canvas, uh, you can go ahead and fill in your sides.
and continuing to fill in the sides with that same color of purple. So once you have your sides painted, the top of your canvas painted, you are going to be ready to blend your purple together. Um, so when you think of a, a sunrise, it kind of goes from light to kind of like a darker color. So I want to add a little bit of lighter uh, purple to this very bottom area. So in order to lighten this color, um, I'm gonna make take my red and I'm gonna mix a little more red into that purple Just to get that reddish purple tone and Then what I'm gonna do is take some of my white paint and I'm gonna mix it in with the red and the purple So this color is really pretty color um, you you're gonna start to see this lighter shade of purple um, by taking a little bit of red, a little bit of white, and mixing it in with your red and your and your blue. You can kind of test it out on your canvas too to see if it's light enough. So that's kind of like my lighter shade um, of purple there. Put a little bit more down so you can see that. So in front of my darker purple, you see that it kind of stands out a little bit more. It's not super white, so if this come if this mixture comes out really white, uh, make sure to put a little bit more purple back in. And what you're gonna do when once you make that mixture is you're gonna go and create a line um, right at the very bottom. It's important that you do this while your dark purple is wet because we actually want to blend those colors together later. So with this lighter shade of purple, I'm just going to go across my darker purple. When both colors are wet, they blend together the best. So you really do want both colors to be wet at the same time. And you're going to sort of take, taking that purple and sweeping it all the way across um, your canvas. So I'm going to work my lighter purple up until it's about halfway um into my darker purple so as you see i have the very bottom of my sky kind of like this lighter hue of purple there and then i'm going to apply some streaks at the very top imagine your sky has streaks of purple because it's not all one solid purple I'm going to take my purple and just kind of streak a line all the way across. I have a little bit more white on my brush too to create these streaks because I really want them to stand out. Especially with that beautiful red and that blue. So I'm sort of applying that to the darker 
purple there at the very top. And as you see, I have the lighter shade of purple at the bottom, and then I have the very top that's darker purple with these lighter streaks. And you're just gonna kind of lightly take your brush and go all the way across. Not too many streaks to cover up that darker purple, but just enough to create it. A little texture in your painting there. Looks really pretty. You're kind of going all the way across. Staying in the middle. So once you have those streaks, one thing that we can do is blend in our lighter purple and our darker purple together. Um, it might already be blended in for you or you might have a direct line where you see where your purple begins, where your dark purple um, begins and ends and where your light purple begins and ends. And whenever I do landscape paintings, I like to get rid of that line um, so that way it look, makes it look a little bit more natural. So in order to do that, what you're going to have to do is get rid of that lighter shade of purple that we were working with. So go ahead and clean your brush. And what you're going to do is dip your brush in back into your darker purple. Now it's important to move fast um, because as mentioned earlier, when both colors are wet, they blend together the best. So our lighter purple is wet so we're going back in into our darker purple and I'm gonna go really fast and just kind of blending in my lighter and my darker purple I don't really want to get rid of those streaks but this kind of helps my my sky blend together so as you see now that those two purples are blending together. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit of paint to blend those two together. And you still, you'll still have your streaks in there too. I'm gonna apply a little bit more red to my brush and to my darker purple. And I'm now gonna put a little red at the bottom too. I still have the purple mixture, but I have some red on my brush now. And just taking that red and applying that pure red right on top of your lighter purple at the very bottom. I'm even gonna put some red at the very top of my lighter purple too. So now I have like these streaks of red looks really pretty next to our purple. So I think that's enough blending. Um, so we have our sky and we have our red on top of our purple. So now that we have that, we can work on our water. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and clean my brush. And if you have to refresh your blue, go ahead and do that because we're gonna be using a lot of blue. And you can take your big brush and wipe it on your uh, paper or your napkin. make sure it's nice and clean and you don't have any of that purple on your brush we're still going to use our big brush for this part so what I'm going to have us do is dip our big brush once it's clean into our blue paint and what we're going to do with our blue paint so I want you to fill in this space here. So everything underneath your purple, we can fill with blue. Because that's gonna be the color of our water. Um, so this part, you're just gonna kind of sweep your blue all the way across. 
you can start at the very top. Um, and whenever I do the water part, um, especially with landscapes, it's okay if you overlap slightly on top of your sky um, because the water and the sky meet together. So you really wanna create that beautiful effect. You see how beautiful this blue is, um, right underneath our purple. So I edged my brush up a little bit higher and I overlapped slightly on top of my purple sky. And you're gonna try to make this line kind of straight. Sometimes as an artist, um, that line doesn't um, turn out super straight at first. So uh, don't worry, you're just gonna have to overlap on top and kind of edge your brush to try to make it straight. And we'll add our mountains in later on top to make it kind of appear like it's even straighter. I'm going back and forth, nice and smooth, filling up everything towards the very bottom of your canvas. big sweeping motions to do this part. If you choose to, you can also paint the sides too, so that way when you hang it, And just like what we did with the sky, I like to go back over my blue just to make sure it is all blue. We have our ocean. to really see those the color um, start to get a little bit brighter too um, so that's always my favorite thing as an artist to blend in the colors and the more you layer with your colors you're going to start to notice that it's going to get a little bit brighter too and you're continuing to fill up all of your canvas underneath your purple um, you can also paint the sides if you haven't done that.
And then the bottom, I like to wait till the end, um, just so it's easier to turn my canvas over. So once you have done the water part, um, what we can do next is work on our clouds. Um, so our clouds are actually beautiful blues in our sky. Um, this part, we can go ahead and switch into our medium sized brush. And that way it'll be a little bit easier to make those detailed clouds. Make sure your medium sized brush is nice and clean for this part. And taking my medium sized brush, um, you can go ahead and dip your brush in your blue paint. By now our sky, I'm guessing, has dried. Um, if your sky hasn't dried completely, sometimes it's best to let it dry a little bit more before putting on this blue. Um, if, if it's slightly wet, that's fine too. You're going to take your medium sized brush and you're going to make a little cloud. When I do clouds, I think of cotton candy. You know, cotton candy is like really fluffy. Um, that's kind of like what you're going to do with when you make your clouds. Right now, I made a cloud that is right at the very top. You can hardly see it, but it is there. It's a smaller cloud. Imagine that's cut off. So you hardly see that one. Um, after you do that, I'm going to make another cloud. And this one, in addition to cotton candy, I think of a crocodile whenever I make clouds because a crocodile goes from big and then it gets really skinny at the beak. That's kind of like what this cloud does. So starting at the very edge, I'm going to use these circle motions to create this cloud to look, make it look nice and fluffy. I'm going to take my blue and kind of make a crocodile shape. You can even make it look like it's coming on the side of your canvas. too with that blue paint. Well, it's kind of like how my cloud looks there. Kind of looks like a crocodile shape where it gets big and then it gets kind of skinny. And you're gonna take that cloud and kind of go to the middle of your canvas when you do that part. After we have completed that cloud, um, you're gonna go ahead and work on making another cloud. And this one is gonna be slightly like the first one that we made where it's kind of cut off. Um, so what I'm gonna do is make like a bunch of little circles to make this cloud. Make it appear like it's at the very top of my canvas. And it kind of looks like that. Gives it a nice, uh, kind of cuts off your cloud there. So taking your brush and making circles to do that part. You can make it look fluffy with a little bit of texture in it. And you can even paint the top of your canvas and make your clouds look like they're wrapping around. So I'm even painting the top part.
Once you do this cloud, you can do another cloud. This cloud is going to be like right next to my longer crocodile cloud. And I'll do this cloud first so you can see the shape of it. Kind of has like the thin, a thin cloud on the sides and then it gets kind of poofy in the middle. So it kind of takes this big kind of ice cream shape. And that's how I made this cloud here. Doing the same thing and filling it all with blue. Creating these circles. Give your cloud some texture. So whenever you're doing clouds too, keep in mind that you want to make them all different. As you see, I made this longer cloud different from this bigger cloud here. Um, so just to make it look a little bit more realistic, that's always good to do is making each of your clouds kind of different in, in their own unique way. So once you do that, what we can do is make another cloud. And this one is a little bit tinier. So I'm gonna take my brush and kind of make a smaller textured cloud here. Beautiful blue looks so pretty next to our purple. And that's like my smaller cloud. I kind of made this same cloud but made it a smaller version. So applying my blue and darkening it just to make it stand out a little bit more. And then making another cloud underneath this big crocodile shaped cloud. This cloud, I'm just gonna kind of make a streak of blue. It's gonna be like my thinnest cloud on my painting here. So really you can make a line and then make like a little swirls on top of the line. Well, it's pretty thin. And that's like right underneath my crocodile shaped cloud. Once you do that, you can make another cloud. This one, I'm gonna do a dot, and then I'm gonna make it a little bit wiggly. So I have a dot, and then I made another cloud right here. This one's like an itty bitty cloud, so it kind of appears like this big cloud that we made where it's like big at the top and then it gets skinny on the sides. It's kind of like how you wanna make this cloud. And let's see, I have room for one more thin cloud. I'm just gonna do a thin blue line um, on the very side of my canvas. You can hardly see it, but I'll hold that up so you can see it a little bit closer. We have kind of like a thin line right there. Those are our clouds. So the next step is working on our water. So we're gonna let our, our sky dry a little bit. Um, and we're gonna start to add on some purples um, on our water. So what I'm gonna have you do is, you actually don't have to clean your brush. Um, you can go right inside of your purple that we were working with for our sky. So if you have to remake your purple, it's gonna be blue and red mixed together. I'm also gonna take some white and I'm gonna make a lighter shade of purple too. Kind of like what we made earlier when we painted the bottom of our uh, sky with that lighter shade. And I'm gonna take this lighter shade of purple here, which is white, blue, and red mixed together. It's kind of like that color here. Um, and what we can do is apply some streaks to our water. So starting on my blue, I'm just gonna take my lighter shade of purple and I'm gonna make lines. 
to make like a reflection. In order to make a reflection, I like to do a lot of lines. Sweeping my lighter shade of purple on top of that blue water. And I'll hold that up a little bit so you can see all of that texture. So really being free with your brush when you do this part and creating big lines going all the way across. Sometimes I like to work with a little bit of a larger brush too. So if you feel comfortable, you can even use like a brush like this size here, which is, this is like my large brush. It's a little bit smaller than the larger brush I used earlier. And I'm gonna do the same thing with this. That way my line, I'm angling my brush this way too, so my lines are a little straighter. And that helps to make a reflection. overlapping on top too. So don't be afraid to really streak um, that purple. It can even touch the edges a little bit. I do like to kind of focus on the middle part of my um, water because that's where my sun is gonna sit. Um, so the middle part, I'm gonna put a lot more purple. As you see, I have a lot more purple in the middle and then it's kind of hitting the sides too a little bit. And you're just gonna run your brush back and forth and do exactly uh, what I did. That way you create some waves in your water. If your purple changes too, that's okay. Like it might turn into a lighter shade. So once you reach a point where it's like this and you have a lot of purple. You see how some of my purple I did use a little more white too to create that texture. And you're just going to go all the way across back and forth. Making sure you're overlapping too with your purple. So I would say that's more than enough uh, lighter purple that I'm gonna put on my canvas. Um, and the next thing that you are going to need to do is add in some baby blues. Um, so once you finish with your purple, go ahead and clean your brush, getting rid of all of that purple. Um, and what we're gonna do next is add on some baby blue to our water. So if you have to refresh your blue, go ahead and do that.
And you also are going to need to refresh your white if um, need be. And what I'm going to do once my brush is clean, um, I'm going to dip my brush, my big brush, inside of my blue. And I'm going to mix blue and uh, white together. Um, so it's going to create like a baby blue color. And that's kind of like my baby blue there. Um, I mixed white and blue together to do that part. Um, with your baby blue, this part is going to look really pretty on top of our purple. I'm going to take my baby blue and I'm just going to create streaks on the side of my water. And those streaks are going to overlap on top of your purple slightly. You see how beautiful that looks? It really helps the water stand out and look, make it look more like water. Um, so I did that on the side and it kind of runs over your purple a little bit too when you do that part. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Taking your brush and making big streaks. Your purple and your blue mixed together, that's okay. So well, as you see, my purple is still there, but I have my baby blue um, on my water. So it really helps it to stand out. You're going to sort of leave the purple in the middle. Um, if your purple gets lost and your baby blue covers it, I actually like to go back into my purple and just apply a little bit more purple on the sides. That way I have purple and I have blue on my water. So that's all of the um, streaks that we can put on our water. Once you reach a point where you have a good amount of streaks, you can let it be. You don't have to blend in those streaks too much. I think it actually looks pretty when there's a good amount of texture on your painting. And the next step is going to be adding on some black paint. Um, but before we do that black, we can add our sun on. That way we'll give them a chance to dry. So this part, you can actually pick up your uh, tiny brush to do your sun. Um, so that way you get a little bit more detail. Um, our sun is going to be white and yellow. So make sure you have both those colors. Make sure your white is really clean. Um, so if you have to make another uh, mixture of white on the side of your yellow, I would always recommend that. and you're gonna mix your white and your yellow together. This part, I'm gonna use a little more white in this mixture just so whenever I make a sun, I do use a lot more white just to make sure it's nice and bright. Um, but it still has a tone of yellow in it. It's kind of like this creamy white color with a little bit of yellow. And that is using my tiny brush to do that part. And what I'm gonna do is create an arc um, in the very middle of my water in my sky. Um, so on top of your blue water, you're gonna create two curved lines to start off your sun. 
Now our sun actually curves in front of our uh, cloud. And I'm gonna slightly go over and creating this big half shape circle just to get my outline correct. And that's how my sun looks. I'm not gonna fill in my sun just yet because I wanna give my sky a little bit more time to dry. Um, so that outline is just there to help us know where that's gonna be. That's our sun. And the next part is working on the very bottom of our canvas. Um, and this part, I'm going to switch back into my medium sized brush. Using my medium sized brush, I'm gonna go right into my black paint. Um, and what I'm going to do is create a line at the very bottom. So I'm gonna take my black and I'm gonna create a line that's gonna be like my ground. So this line is actually going all the way across you get to the other side. I'm going to try to make this line nice and straight. 